Hey y'all, what's good? And welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all of my subscribers. I appreciate you guys so much. Let's remember to have healthy dialogue, be respectful to ourselves and to each other, and to challenge the argument and not the person. Let's get it. What do you need an ambulance for, sir? Yes, hi, my, uh, my daughter is having a hard time breathing. She's breathing, but she's young. She's barely breathing. Is she able yes, to talk about... in complete sentences? No, she can't. She's not talking in no complete sentences at all. How old is she? Four. She had fell out, and we were just trying to see what's going on with her. Is she conscious now? Is she conscious? Yes. But, but she's not really breathing. She's not speaking. She's not speaking. She's not responding to us. Is she awake? Her eyes are open. Her eyes are open, yes. But she's not really alert? She's not saying anything or responding to our... When I press down on her chest, she'll make a sound. Okay. Well, don't press down on her chest, okay? No, with two hands. Uh -uh. Does your daughter have a history? Does she have a history of what? Yeah, does she have a history of any breathing issues? No. What was she doing before this happened? Well, she's been acting a little sick. We we went to Red Lobster last week. I thought it was because of that because she started acting weird. I thought it was like a, a stomach virus or something of what she ate or whatever. And I noticed as she's been at home, we started, like, feeding her, and she was just throwing everything up. So gave her ginger ale, she threw the ginger ale up. I gave her, I gave her Tylenol, she spit that up. Okay. When's the last time she ate or drank anything? Um, we try to give her um, some breakfast in the morning, and she ate, like, a little bit of it, but it's like she kept chewing it. She was prolonged to chewing it for a long time. All right, she's been having these flu, these flu-like symptoms for how long? It started last Thursday when we came for her last so we noticed she started acting weird. Since last Thursday? Yes. As in, like, a few days ago? Yes. Has she been running a fever? Um, she was a little hot, but then her body would, like, just be weird to turn cold. What is your name? Anaya, A-N-I-Y-A. -A. What's your last name? Day, D-A-Y. Did you guys try contacting the child's pediatrician? Did we try? Yeah, did you call her pediatrician when this started? No, I actually just spoke to a 24-hour nurse. Okay. What is she doing now? Well, now I just got her sitting up. I tried to even um, put um, do mouth to mouth. Well, if she's breathing, you probably don't need to do CPR. Do you know what I'm saying? Because I like I put my fingers. I put my. I'm just trying to. I'm just. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what else can I do. Like I put my hands up to her nose to see if she was breathing, and I didn't feel no air coming out. Like she got her eye open. Wait a minute. Is she not breathing? No. Your child is not breathing. No. Okay, let's do CPR then. That's what I'm trying to do. I, I, I didn't do my whole force two hands. I just two, two hands, two fingers, two fingers basically is what I'm doing. Okay, I want you to get her on a flat surface, okay? Okay, say it again. No. They just told me, yes, we're going to start CPR right now. Okay, put, okay, put, put, the, phone, put the phone on speaker. Put the phone on speaker. Put yeah, let's put the phone, phone on speaker, okay? If you guys have an AED available, I want you to send someone to go get it right now, okay? What available? An AED machine. No, we, okay. no, we don't have that. Anymore. All right, place your daughter flat on her back on the floor, okay? Okay. Kneel okay. down near her chest. More on her, on her back. She is definitely not breathing, correct? Yes. Okay. Place the heel of your hand on the center of her chest. Mm -hmm. Put your other hand on top of the first hand. I want you to push right. down firmly on the chest at least two inches, only to the heel of your hand. Okay. okay? We're going to do it 30 mm -hmm. times, just like you're pumping her chest, okay? You're going to count out loud with me. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. We're going to keep going, okay, hard and fast. Okay, she starts breathing, okay. then we're going to stop. We're going to keep doing this. Keep going. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Keep going, okay? The squad just called that they're unseen. We have. I need some. One of you guys to get up and go open the door. Okay. Okay, down or no? Is she still not breathing? Yeah, she make a sound whenever we do that. Whenever we, you know, you do the little pumping thing, she made a sound like a, hmm, 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 hmm. But then is she, she breathing? Stopped. Check her nose. I Somebody should still cold. be pumping. You feel cold air. Feel cold air. Yes, you feel cold air coming out the nose. There's cold air coming out of the nose. Yes. Okay, if she's got air coming out. Is her chest rising up and down? No. Her chest is not. All right, keep pumping. Okay, if her chest isn't going up and down, I want you to keep going until the squad gets started to take over. Okay? I'm going to count with you again. Let me know when the squad opens the door. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Was she trying to time breathe right now, guys? What? Oh, the, the, the paramedics have been paramedics here now. All right, all right, let them take over, okay? All right. All right, thank you. On March 11th, 2018, at approximately 3.32 p.m., I responded to the apartment complex of 22701 Lakeshore Boulevard for a report of a four-year-old not breathing in apartment 213. When I arrived on scene, I observed a medic from 1341 carrying the small child out of the building and into the ambulance. The child, later identified as the Anaya Day, was fully dressed in a winter hat, winter coat, t-shirt, blue jeans, and socks. I can see the skin on her hands and face was extremely pale and lifeless. Anaya's face and neck appeared small and emaciated. Her fingers were so thin that I could see the individual joints in her fingers. While medics were preparing Anaya for transport, they advised Patrolman Harold that she had what appeared to be burn marks on her feet and legs. Medics then transported her to Euclid General Hospital, where she was pronounced deceased at 3.40 p.m. Patrolman Harold followed paramedics to the hospital and photographed several injuries to Anaya. He also collected the clothing she was wearing. Patrol Harold found Anaya to have a very large bruise to her left eye, which caused the eyelid to be nearly shut. There was also a laceration, laceration just above the left eyebrow. There were also what appeared to be scald marks on Anaya's right shin and foot. Later detectives also discovered similar marks on the back of Anaya's left leg. The clothes and photographs were provided to detectives to be entered into evidence for the incident. Anaya's mother, Sierra Day, and her stepfather, Deontay Lewis, were both on scene at the apartment and had made the 911 call for assistance. I spoke with them both in the lobby of the apartment complex. Sierra stated that the family had gone out to dinner at a Red Lobster last Thursday and that Anaya had not been acting the same since. Sierra told me that Anaya had not been eating or drinking very much since that and that they had and that they did try anything she would throw up. 
Sierra stated at some point she called a 24-hour nurse's line. They reportedly told her it might be a stomach virus and to keep her hydrated. Sierra stated that Anaya seemed weak and unsteady on her feet on the morning of March 11, 2018. She stated that she had been giving her ginger ale and Anaya was still throwing it up. Sierra said that Anaya was to go poop. Sorry, Sierra asked that Anaya asked to go poop and Sierra helped her sit on the toilet. Sierra told me that she then left Anaya on the toilet for an unknown period of time and went to make soup. She heard a loud boom from the bathroom and came in to see Anaya laying on the floor. Sierra told me that she helped Anaya to her feet and Anaya started to walk out of the bathroom before stumbling and falling to the ground again and was unresponsive. That's when they called for emergency medical attention. Sierra told me she started a CPR at the time also as she worked for a daycare. When asked to repeat the story a second time, Sierra then mentioned that because Anaya seemed weak and was non-responding to her as normal, in the morning she turned on the air conditioner because she thought it felt hot in the apartment and that might be affecting her. She also stated she put Anaya in the bath to try and help her feel better, but Anaya kept asking to just lay down. She said after getting her out of the bath, Anaya then asked to use the toilet. That is when she said Anaya fell out and became unresponsive. Sierra also provided police with a written statement about the incident. In the statement, she mentioned that after falling off of the toilet, Anaya became unresponsive and appeared to stop breathing. She wrote that she gave, she gave Anaya CPR and Anaya began to respond again, so she laid her down. Sierra then wrote that she walked by Anaya and saw her acting strange. Again, so she gave her some food drink and tried to give her Tylenol but she threw it all up and stopped breathing. Deontay told police that the family went to Red Lobster and after that Anaya was acting strange. He stated that the past few days Anaya was weak and unable to walk. He stated that today Anaya became unresponsive and they called for paramedics. Deontay also provided police with a written statement. Sierra also completed a consent to search form for her apartment after notifying police that she was the only one on the lease and a HIPAA release form for Anaya's medical records at Euclid General Hospital. It should be noted that Deontay also told police he was not on the lease, but he lived at the apartment as well. After gathering all of the information from several officers, detectives, and the OIC Sierra and Dante were both placed under arrest for child endangerment and transported to the Euclid Annex County Jail, where they were placed on a hold for detectives. A CCH request for both Sierra and Dante showed they both had no criminal record. A CAD search of Sierra, however, showed several reports at our apartment with our department in the past few months. It also showed a report of abusing a minor filed in May of 2017. The report was made by the HarborQuest Daycare and chronicled about one and a half years worth of injuries to Anaya that the facility documented. Children and Family Services was contacted for that report and upon further investigation, it was learned that they had several closed cases of abuse involving Sierra and Anaya and that they had recently received a complaint of of abuse on March the 6, 2018, from an undisclosed party. The apartment was locked by Deontay when paramedics left with Anaya, and after consent to search was signed by Sierra, the key was provided to police. Police entered the apartment to conduct a precursory search for people and found no one inside. The apartment was then secured while detectives obtained a search warrant. I also completed a canvas of the apartments immediately around, above, and below apartment 213. The vast majority of the neighbors and I made contact with said they did not really know anyone in the apartment complex and that they all kept to themselves. I did, however, find that the neighbors in apartments 214 and 215 knew of the family as they were next door to each other. The resident of 215 was... 
I'm not going to say the name. This person stated she had lived in the apartment for just over a year and that Deontay and Sierra had moved in recently, about two to three months prior to this report. She stated that she had only seen an adult male and an adult female come and go from the apartment. She also stated that she had two younger children in her home and she never heard or seen from any children in 213. The the resident in 214 was another individual. I'm not going to say their name. He stated he knew a couple that lived in 213 with a small child. He also stated that he helped them move a couch into the apartment about a week prior to this incident. He noticed an argument a few days later, but stated it was short-lived and they seemed to resolve it quickly. He also stated that he, that he did not hear anything from the apartment until police arrived, arrived on the scene from this incident. All right, so this is from another officer. I responded to 22701 Lakeshore Boulevard in reference to a broadcasted call of a four-year-old child not responding. Upon arrival, I took the stairs to the second floor as the elevator was being held for medics. I made my way to the second floor and observed a medic carrying a child, which appeared lifeless as the legs and arms were hanging from the arms of the medic. I walked past the apartment where the call originated from, which was A213, where I observed a male and a female locking the door. I ran downstairs to the ambulance when I observed the same male and female standing near the entrance of the apartment building. The male was later identified as Deontay Lewis and the female was later identified as Sierra Day. And they were also later identified as the stepfather and mother of the child. Both did not show any emotion that the child was being placed into an ambulance. Officer Eddington asked to get their information to which they began giving it, giving him. Outside, I was pulled to the side by a medic who advised me that we should look into this as the child had burns on her body. I was also advised that the child, Anaya Day, was in full arrest, meaning that her heart was not beating. I advised other units units and dispatch that I was heading to the hospital upon learning information from the medic. Upon arrival to the hospital, I observed medics as they were pulling the gurney out of the ambulance. I observed Day laying in the gurney. She had a large black bruise on her left eye. I looked at the medic and asked if she is alive. He just shook his head no. Day was brought into the hospital, which was Euclid General Hospital, and pronounced deceased at 3.40 p.m. I made a call to OIC Sergeant Walsh and advised him that we needed to call in a detective as there were signs of abuse and she was tiny and appeared malnourished. It was also relayed in the medical room that Day had been deceased for some time. I began looking at Day. Her appearance was very pale and her waist was raised and twisted and stayed that way while she laid on the bed. It was learned that that was because Rigor mortis had already set in. Day was ice cold to the touch. I began to take pictures, starting with her head. I photographed Day. There was a large black swollen mark on her left eye. The mark had a laceration inside the black mark. The mark was so big that her left eye was swollen shut. Her right eye had a bruise near it, as well with slight swelling. Her right eye was partially open. There were also several signs on her ankle that appeared to be burns where the blister had popped and were dried. Day's jawline appeared to be clenched and was very distinct. Day's arms and legs were very thin and you can see every bone in her ribs. Day's body only had on a pull-up when she entered the hospital. Medics advised that they had pulled off all of of her clothes. They advised she was wearing blue pants, a t-shirt, which was cut off by medics, socks and a pink winter coat and a pink in color winter hat. The clothing was taken and placed in brown paper bags and given to the detective bureau. The medical examiner's office was called by a nurse at the hospital. The nurse advised me that the medical examiner had requested that we place paper bags on Day's feet and hands and secure them with rubber bands. I assisted the nurse in the request. Gloves were worn by both the nurse and myself. I stood outside the room until Detective Caruso and Detective Sergeant 
Murawski arrived on scene. I assisted them in taking pictures and scale pictures. I then brought back the clothes that were in paper bags and placed them on a desk in the detective bureau room. The pictures I took were given to Detective Caruso, who placed them in the Dems per policy. Okay. No. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Mr. Raleigh? Good morning, Your Honor. Right. Very good. Mr. Raleigh, any uh, thing on behalf of the state? No, Your Honor. We also would like you to continue the original file. All right, very good. I'll accept the waiver and the plea. I will continue the original file, which is a $1 million uh, CSP bond, uh, although man looks like we also have a warrant out for you. Uh, we'll order you supplies a sample of your DNA. Uh, Mr. Marine will note uh, your office being retained on the matter. I will also assign Attorney Thomas Shaughnessy uh, to represent you this day. As I should have asked, ma'am, do you have the money to hire a lawyer to defend yourself in this case? Ma'am, do you understand my question? Sorry, do you have money to hire your own lawyer? Thank you. And I will continue to sign for the office of uh, Mr. Marine and also Thomas Shaughnessy. Good morning. Nicole Long, Jane, I'm 002699. My client has reviewed the indictment. It has been over 24 hours. The way you're reading it, and you can't go All right, very good. And this uh, will get to the original bond? Yes. Yeah. All right, very good. So, well, bankers. <laughs> yeah. All right, very good. I'll accept the waiver and the plea. Uh, and we'll continue the original bond, which is a $1 million CSP bond. Uh, Mr. Lewis, I'll also order you a supply sample of your DNA. Uh, this probably didn't wish you to be heard on any other issue at this point. No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Longino will know you're being retained on the matter. This case will also be assigned to the document to the of Judge McCormick and the first pre-trial will be at 4, 17, 9 a.m. Thank you. Good luck, sir.